Pancakes are one of the most iconic breakfasts, and so many recipes claim to have the best. So we spent several weeks and tried out a few techniques, and we found what it actually takes to make the best, fluffiest buttermilk pancakes ever. The right amount of flour is crucial to achieving a fluffy pancake, and so many recipes vary in terms of how much they call for. So we experimented to find the exact proportion needed for the perfect pancake. So if you use too little flour, in this case two cups, you end up with a pancake that tastes really great, but it's really flat. Too much flour creates a deceivingly thick pancake. Sure, it looks great, but it lacks flavor and it's really just too dense. I mean, it kind of tastes like eating, you know, like baked flour. No one wants it. We found the sweet spot is two and a half cups of flour. Your pancakes will be light, fluffy, and delicious. Pro tip, make sure you measure the flour correctly by spooning it into the measuring cup and then leveling it with a straight edge. If you scoop the flour directly with the cup or just pack it right in, whatever you make is gonna be way too dense. Now, flour isn't the only thing that affects how pillowy your pancakes are. To up their fluff factor, you're gonna need a leavener. Leaveners are those ingredients that allow food to rise when cooking or baking. These are things like yeast, baking powder, and baking soda. If you use only baking soda, your pancakes will rise but taste too soapy. If you use just baking powder, which is a mixture of baking soda and cream of tartar, it'll taste like aluminum foil. We use a mixture of both because when they work together, you'll get the perfect amount of lift from the combination of baking soda, along with the right amount of tang from the cream of tartar and the baking powder. So now that we've got all that settled, let's prep our dry ingredients. This is pretty straightforward. Add the sugar, salt, baking powder and baking soda to the flour and whisk to combine. Now, there's nothing more classic than using buttermilk for your pancakes. That said, if you find yourself in a pinch, you can actually make your own. It's pretty simple. Just add a few tablespoons of lemon juice or vinegar to whole milk and let it stand for five to 10 minutes. Once you see the milk start to curdle, you can use it just like buttermilk. Yeah, up close it looks a little weird. We also did an experiment to see if using buttermilk powder would enhance the fluffiness of our pancakes. And it actually did affect the texture, but the buttermilk flavor was completely lost. Now we're gonna move on to our wet ingredients. Add the buttermilk, melted butter, and egg yolks, and again, whisk together. Yeah, it's a lot of butter, but you're making pancakes. You want them to be buttery and flavorful and delicious. Make your life better with butter. Okay, this seems simple, but this is actually a make or break moment. You're gonna add the buttermilk mixture to the dry ingredients and gently mix it until just combined. I really wanna emphasize to not over mix your batter. That'll result in dense, flat pancakes. You also want to use a rubber spatula instead of a whisk. That'll help you just gently fold the ingredients together. Now, eggs are the final, super important part of guaranteeing that you'll achieve picture-perfect fluffy pancakes. I cannot stress this enough. They're also the most debated. We found that adding a whole egg all at once doesn't actually result in any fluffiness. You should add the egg white separate from the egg yolk, because on its own, the egg white has different properties than if you were to add the whole egg all at once. The most popular method is to add the egg yolk to the batter, then beat the separated white into soft peaks before folding it in. This does work, but we actually found that you can save yourself some time by adding the separated unbeaten egg white on its own to get a pancake that's just as fluffy. I mean, who really wants to break out the hand mixer at 7 a.m., am I right? Now we're gonna add the unwhipped egg white on its own. And again, fold it until just combined. You don't wanna see any of that snotty egg, but you also don't want it to be too mixed in. This may look undermixed, but some lumps and small pockets of flour are actually what you want the batter to look like. At this point, let the batter rest for 15 to 30 minutes so all the ingredients can really get to know each other. While it may not seem super important, the pan you use can radically impact how your pancakes look. You can absolutely use a nonstick pan if you want. Its smooth surface will guarantee that your pancakes are flat and uniform. However, we prefer a cast iron. The rough surface of the cast iron will give your pancakes these glorious craggy pockets, perfect for soaking up all that butter and syrup you're gonna put on top. Set your pan over medium heat with a tablespoon of butter. Yes, more butter. You can use oil if you want to, but it'll make your pancakes taste more like a donut rather than a pancake, which is fine if, you know, that's your thing. Once the butter melts and starts to bubble, turn the heat down to medium-low to ensure that everything cooks evenly. We found that a hefty third cup of batter gives us the ideal size pancakes, but you can make them as big or as small as you want. This is also the time for you to customize your pancakes with blueberries, chocolate chips, whatever you want. I'm a berry type of girl myself, but you can go crazy. 
So after a few minutes, you're gonna start to see these bubbles pop up on the surface. That's your green light to flip your pancake. Don't be discouraged if your first pancake doesn't look great. It usually takes a few tries. I mean, and no one has to know. It's a snack just for you. You don't need to let the pancake cook for too long on the side since it did most of the cooking before you flipped it. Just a minute or two to get that golden brown bottom. That's pretty much it. We like ours with more butter, shocker, it's tasty, and lots of maple syrup. And there you have it. You've got yourself the perfect stack of fluffy buttermilk pancakes. Sure, they aren't the most complicated thing to make, and don't take that long, but if you really want to upgrade your weekend, skip the box mix. Take the extra time to follow these steps we've taught you, and we can guarantee that they'll be some of the best pancakes you've ever had. We mean it. We can't stop making them. These are the pancakes where people came running in the office. How many pancakes do you think you made? I think I made over 400 pancakes, 500 maybe. Someone shook my hand after saying thank you for bringing these into our life. <laughs>